this video we will learn how plants are classified all living organisms are classified according to the five kingdom classification now living organisms are further divided into prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells kingdom monera the first kingdom all prokaryotic organisms come under the kingdom called monera and those living organisms having eukaryotic cells are further subdivided into unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms unicellular mean made up only one cell and multicellular made up of thousands of cells those organisms who have eukaryotic organisms but unicellular they belong to the kingdom protista and the multicellular are further divided into uh, cells uh, with a cell wall and those without a cell wall and you know that those cells having a cell wall only belong to kingdom plantae only plants have a cell wall and those having a cell wall are divided into autotrophs and heterotrophs so we have two more kingdoms here fungi and plantae and the last kingdom belongs to those without a cell wall and that is animalia so all in all we have the five kingdom classification beginning with kingdom monera then protista the heterotrophs called fungi autotrophs called plantae and kingdom animalia and in this lesson we will study only about this kingdom called plantae now the five kingdom system of classification was introduced by robert whitaker a very famous scientist who did a lot of work to classify these plants animals and living organisms we mentioned the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell so let us do a little revision and uh, know what is the prokaryotic and what is a eukaryotic cell when you can see from this uh, table here that the prokaryotic cell is much smaller than the eukaryotic one and the membrane bound nucleus is absent in a prokaryotic cell in the figure you can see there's just a lump of nuclear material whereas in the eukaryotic cell membrane bound nucleus is present and you can see all organelles very all the cell organelles very clearly defined now prokaryotic cell is unicellular and these come to in multicellular organisms prokaryotic cell does not have mitochondria and the eukaryotic cell mitochondria to make energy is present now prokaryotic cell only one chromosome is present and that too it's not a true chromosome whereas a eukaryotic cell has more than one chromosome present so there's vast difference between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cell what is the basis for plant classification what is the criteria how have the plants been classified now first of all plants are autotrophic that is meaning they make their own food they are living organisms they have eukaryotic cells the well defined cells with cell walls they perform photosynthesis with the help of chlorophyll and after making their food they are the main source of food for all living organisms so what is the criteria for classification first of all plants are classified on the basis of the presence and absence of organs now what are these organs in plants root stem leaves flower fruit these are all organs so some plants have all of them some plants don't have them so that is the basis on which they are classified if you can see here this is moss it does not have any of the organs then second criteria is the presence or absence of separate conducting tissues for conduction of water and food now we have low level plants and we have very big plants like mango banyan tree etc and moss is a little small lost plant structure 
so some the bigger plants have separate tissues for conducting of food and water and the smaller ones don't have this the third criteria is whether the plants bear seeds and if they bear seeds if they have seeds then whether the seeds are within the fruit or the seeds have no fruit around it like the cashew cashew has no uh, the seed is just without the fruit okay so that is the next class uh, criteria for classification next one is the number of cotyledons now cotyledons is if you take out the seed coat and you look inside whether the seed is divided into can be divided into two parts or it is only one so if they are one uh, seed only one part of a seed they are monocot and if they are two parts of the seed they are dicots now in higher plants another criteria is depending upon the absence of presence of flowers fruits and seeds so then they are classified as cryptogams that means non flowering plants and phanerogams which have flowers then after that depending on whether seeds are enclosed in fruits or not phanerogams are further classified as gymnosperms and angiosperms and then the number of cotyledons in the seeds they are classified as monocots or dicot this is a monocot seed and look into the figure you can see monocot and dicot seeds now kingdom plantae as you can see for the subdivided into cryptogams that is non flowering phanerogams flowering plants cryptogams has three sub divisions thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta phanerogams further divided into gymnosperms and angiosperms and then angiosperms are divided into monocot and dicot plants okay first we come to cryptogams that is the non flowering plants as you can see divided into three groups further divided into thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta now cryptogam is a plant that reproduces by spores it doesn't have a male and female okay it just reproduces by spores without flowers or seeds cryptogamy means hidden reproduction which is referring to the fact that there is no seed so we can't see any reproduction okay and cryptogams therefore are the non seed bearing plants division 1 under cryptogams is thallophyta now what are the characteristics of thallophyta is that they grow mainly in water they do not have specific parts like roots stem leaves and flowers but they make their own food they are autotrophic because they are green in color and they have chlorophyll due to be with the uh, photosynthesis they make their own food they are called algae and they show great diversity meaning there are many different kinds of thallophytes now these thallophytes though they don't have roots stem leaves and all they may be multicellular or they can be unicellular they can be large or they can be microscopic some are found in fresh water others are found in saline or sea water okay their body is soft and fiber like and also various types of fungi like yeast and mold which don't have chlorophyll they don't make their own food are also coming under division thallophyta examples given to you in your book are alva spirogyra chara and the very important diagram of spirogyra second division under cryptogams is the division bryophyta now bryophytes are called the amphibians of the plant kingdom now you know and animals amphibians like frog and toad they are called amphibians because they can live in on land as well as in water so bryophytes become the amphibians of the plant kingdom as they grow in moist soil but they need water for reproduction okay now they are thalloid thalloid means having a straight structure no root stem leaf nothing multicellular and they are autotrophic meaning they can prepare their own food they have a flat ribbon like structure they don't have roots stem and leaves instead they have something which looks like a stem 
or a leaf or a root and the ones that look like a root are called rhizoids because they are lower level plants again they do not have specific tissues for conduction of food and these bryophytes reproduce by spore formation that is asexual reproduction meaning that they don't require a separate male and a separate female okay the examples are anthocerus funaria where you can see rhizoids here root like structures which attach them to the uh, where they want to be and risia the third division of cryptogam steridophytes these plants now a little well developed they have root stem leaf and also separate tissues for conduction of food and water so they are little higher uh, level than thallophyta and bryophyta they do not bear flowers and fruits but here again they reproduce with the help of spores formed on the posterior or the back surface under surface of their leaves and second type of reproduction is by sexual reproduction where the formation of the seed is there so you can from reading this only you come to know that pteridophyta though it belongs to cryptogams it is slightly higher order of plant now these are what are spores i have been talking about spore formation so if you look at any fern plant you will find these green dots here these green dots when they are ready for reproduction they start becoming reddish brown in color and then they burst and they release spores and these spores go carried by the wind here and there and then they form they germinate and they form new plants okay so this is the method of spore formation and you can see these are the examples of pteridophytes this is the spores being formed here on fern then this is the same plant which is a uh, i showed you the spores on nephrolepis the common name is fern okay selaginella then we have lycopodium and adiantum now we come to the flowering plants or the phanerogams now phanerogams are further divided into gymnosperms that is the plant with the naked seeds uncovered seeds there is no fruit around it and angiosperms which have the covering of the fruit over the seed and then they are divided into monocots and dicots now what are the characteristics of phanerogams they are plants which have special structures for reproduction and they produce seeds okay after reproduction seeds are formed which contain the embryo that is the young one and the stored food okay now during germination of the seed the stored food is used for the initial growth of the embryo now the division 1 under phanerogams are gymnosperms they are mainly evergreen perennial and woody okay now in uh, in english you have learned about the lesson autumn where in autumn some of the trees they just uh, shed all their leaves and they become completely bare now that does not mean evergreen and perennial leaves trees which never ever give out their leaves their leaves never get brown and fall off all together they are called evergreen and perennial and woody means a strong wooden stem okay like a mango tree a, a, you know a, a coconut tree or a banyan tree the stem is woody now their stems are without branches their leaves form a crown okay we'll see in the picture later they bear male and female flowers on different sporophylls of the same plant and they do not form fruits hence they are called gymnosperms because gymnos means naked and sperms meet seeds so gymnosperms means naked seeds now this is an example thuja of a gymnosperm this is cycas and you can see clearly the woody stem and you can see here the formation of a crown like the leaves form a crown and also you can see the different male and female flowers on different sporophylls of the same plant okay so this is the division called 
gymnosperms. We now move on to the second division of phanerogams, that is angiosperms. Now, the flowers of angiosperms bear the reproductive organs. So, flowers are the one due to which sexual reproduction takes place, the male and the female. Okay. Now, these flowers develop into fruits and seeds are formed inside the fruit. Now, because the seeds are covered, they are called angiosperms. Angios meaning cover and sperm meaning seeds. So, angiosperms means covered seeds like this. See the tamarind where you have the seeds inside and the white fruit there outside which becomes brown later. Now, plants whose seeds can be divided into two equal halves like the pea are called dicordinateless plants. Another two examples are cashews and almonds. And plants whose seeds cannot be divided into two equal halves like corn, wheat, rice are called monocotyledonous plants. And this is an example of an angiosperm. Okay. For your information, there are more than 3,15,000 known species of plants. And therefore, now when you look at a plant, you will be able to say at least whether it is cryptogam or phanerogam, flowering or non-flowering. You can also be see a seed and you can classify and say, okay, this is monocot and this is dicot. Okay, and you can go further if you learn the lesson well. You will still be able to go on the roads, you know, and see different plants and be able to classify them well.